Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. Congratulations. You have discovered what you've heard so much about, the best thing since H.R. Puffin stuff without the <laughs> witchy poo. This is the Growing in Grace podcast. Wow. Heard around the world. I'm Mike Kapler. That's Joel Brzezinski there. Uh, nice to meet you. <laughs> what a tremendous opening to, and we didn't talk about this in advance. I mean, I sent see something in an, email, in an email, but this is Growing in Grace podcast number 900. <laughs> well, this is iconic. <laughs> It's not to, ironic. It's iconic. I had to mention iconic. some random dumb kids show from the seventies or whatever it was. Probably one of the dumbest things ever to land on TV. HR puffins. HR stuff. puffin stuff. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what we do. We kind of draw back on some of those old silly shows, but we do talk about some funny ones too. Some actual real good content <laughs> <laughs> from the past. <laughs> There are people out there right now searching for HR Puff and stuff, and they're going to probably regret that they did it once they start watching something. Well, they'll probably do it three or four times. <laughs> <laughs> and get you know what we really need is people searching for Pete Puma, and then then we know we've set people on the right track. Isn't that yeah, right? When, when we talked about Pete before and the three or four reference, uh, and I'm going to need a whole lot of love. <laughs> I remember telling my adult kids some years back, uh, my daughter and her husband, and so they, you know, they Googled it or whatever. Uh, I think my daughter would have been familiar with it, but her husband wasn't. So when he saw this, these Pete Puma clicks with Bugs Bunny, uh, he was showing people at work. He he, he couldn't get over <laughs> it. He, he he was just so impressed with Pete Puma, and and so the three or four thing. When whenever somebody says three or four, like at our house or you know in a conversation, because it happens a lot. It happens a lot uh, when I'm talking to you <laughs> yes, off the air. Yeah, it happened earlier, <laughs> and, and so when it, it, whenever that happens, we all kind of have a laugh about it, you know, and start imitating <laughs> Pete Puma. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's those things, things that stick in our minds from our youth, from our younger days. And, you know, we were we were 18 years younger when we started this podcast. And I mentioned to my kids yesterday that because um, my son was over and we were having supper. And I just mentioned to my wife, oh, by the way, we're going to be recording in the morning. And um, I just happened to say, by the way, we're going to be doing our uh, 900th podcast and it was like, it's like, wow, you know, it's just like, not to spend a whole bunch of time on this at all, but you think about 900 podcasts and eight, 18 years of doing the Growing in Grace podcast, and not that we, we've never been in this for uh, for all the money that we make from it, <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is zero, and um, the fame, the anything like that, I, I, I always think of myself as just an ordinary guy, but just to think that we're... I, I don't know of any, I, I'm, I'm sure there are podcasts that have been going on longer than ours. I don't know of them, but to have an 18 year stretch of consistent weekly content is just, um, to me, it, it blows me away. And we've talked about it many times. It's definitely a spirit thing. It's something that I know that I could never sustain in and of myself. And um, it's just, uh, it's something that the Holy Spirit has done in and through us. And I'm just so thankful, as as I was talking about last week, that we get the opportunity to share the truth with people that helps the people to be free. That's really what it is all about. It's, it's about nothing else than um, sharing things that will help give people a lift in their step, you know, that will help people put their chin up and, and realize that everything in Christ, it's all good. It's, you know, there's problems in the world there are things that we don't understand and bad things that happen to people and religion them does not help people 
using your word from last week. <laughs> <laughs> the, the religious people out there uh, just t- tend to make things worse for people uh, with all the legalism, with all the, 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 the bad news where they should be presenting people with good news. And so we hope to be able to present uh, some good news for people and, and help them in their daily lives in Christ. Yeah, you know, you may hear some things you aren't sure about, and that's okay with the, that we say. Uh, but Joel makes an interesting point. I, I kind of want to handle this with kid gloves so that I'm not misunderstood. But there, there are many people out there, and, and many that we're friends with, who have um, made a, a vocation out of their ministry. In other words, that this this is how they make a living. This is this is how they put food on the table and. And make ends meet um, is is through formal ministry uh, or an organization, or you know you're you're ordained, you're licensed, whatever. H- however, you're receiving money from donations and and gifts. And we we've, we've been on that side of the right. fence when we did Christian radio. We were listener supported, mm-hmm. so we understand that. Um, but what I, what I want to say though is that we we have done this for the, these past number of years. With and we're not in formal ministry. We're we're not getting paid um, by sharing the gospel with people. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so I, I don't want to be misunderstood on that. I'm just saying right. that we're here just out of uh, the desire of our hearts, as you said, that the Spirit has has laid upon us to try to help people understand the message of Jesus Christ and the gospel and what was accomplished for us. That, that's that's our only motivation. We're not trying to twist your arm to think everything the same way we do, or, because sometimes we're just throwing things out there for you to consider and think about, and you may come to realize that um, a lot of what you used to think wasn't necessarily right because of some of the things that we're trying to point out. Uh, that may be the case sometimes, but we're just here because we want to be here, um, not because we're getting anything for it. Um, and, and so I, I just want to mention that because I, I think it's important because when, when people are trying to come to a greater knowledge of the truth, as we all are, um, I, I just want you to keep that in, in the back of your mind is that we, we have no hidden agenda here <laughs> right? and, and, and no, no f- formal, uh, tenet for, for you to try to subscribe to. Um, it's just about the person of Jesus and what was accomplished. And and that's what we're trying to bring out from these pages in the Bible uh, and with the help of the Holy Spirit. So I think I'm done with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and as we used to say, um, I remember us saying this, it's just two guys talking. It's just you and me, Kat. We're talking and other people are listening in on our conversation. Yes. Um, that's that's it. I mean, we're again, um, if if what we say helps you, that's great, because that's why we're sharing our conversation with you. Um, that's what we want to do. We want to help people. We want people to be able to understand the new covenant, uh, what was accomplished through the cross and the resurrection of Jesus, because, again, so much, I'm just going to use this word, in religiondom, in, in the in the re- religious church is is bringing people down it's really it's hurting people I we've experienced it ourselves and we have seen over the years many many people that are hurt from and I'm not talking physically I'm just talking mentally um, and, in, and in other ways that people are just hurt from what is going on in the church what is taught from pulpits what is taught on on radio on Christian radio and not to put down anybody, but just to, to help people to understand that the, those things that hurt you, you know, when you go to church, when you hear a message, when you interact with other believers, you're not supposed to be hurt. We're supposed to comfort each other and help one another. And so much of what goes on just causes so much um, just bad stuff. And so we're here to, to bring the good, the good news of the gospel to people. And... Well, we're, 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 so we're talking about these false assumptions f- that go on in the church, and that really fits in with what we're talking about here. Um, last week, we talked about how falling from grace isn't about falling into sin. It's about um, people who are trying to be justified by their works. They are the ones who have fallen from grace because it's by grace that we've been saved. It's grace that God has given us through Christ by nothing that we have ever done. And so if you try to do something to earn that, to earn salvation, justification, righteousness, 
peace with God. If you try to do something to earn it, to gain it by what you do, you've fallen from grace. And another phrase that appears in the Bible is you've insulted the spirit of grace. In Hebrews 10, 26 through 29, talks about how if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. And so that verse is thrown at people <laughs> when we're talking about grace. But it's again, it's one of these verses that is taken way out of context. The, the context in Hebrews 10, and if you go back to Hebrews 6, 7, 8, 9, and into 10, the context is the sacrifice of Jesus, the one offering of Jesus that took away our sins, when for years they had been under the sacrifice, uh, the, the offerings of the blood of bulls and goats. Uh, those Old Testament sacrifices could never take away sins. The one sacrifice of Jesus did take away sins, and in fact, in Hebrews ten eighteen, it says, now where there is remission of these, or some versions say forgiveness of these, where there is forgiveness of these sins, there is no longer an offering for sin. The reason there's no longer an offering for sin is because there is forgiveness of sins through that sacrifice of Jesus. So because Jesus' sacrifice worked for all sins for all time, now there is no longer any sacrifice for sins because the one sacrifice worked. So when we get to Hebrews 10, 26, and um, the verses that follow that, how it's, it says, anyone who has rejected the, lo- the law of Moses dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much more punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace? Again, looking at the context, the whole thing here is not that if you sin, there's no longer a sacrifice for sins. Not if you sin, you've trampled the Son of God underfoot and insulted the Spirit of grace. But if you have rejected the sacrifice of Christ, that was God's grace. God did that by his grace. And if you reject that and go back to the blood of bulls and goats, then there's no other sacrifice that you can go to. And you've insulted the Spirit of grace. Isn't it interesting how, again, we can pluck out a verse <laughs> and, and this is one of those i think i think i mentioned this last week that sometimes you and i can post something on social media and uh about the grace of the gospel that goes against what most people have been taught through their their church doctrines and they want to respond with a bible verse mm-hmm. um, not considering the context of what the verse actually says and it's like I said, it's it's sort of a little bit comical. The frustrating part about it for me is I keep hearing the same things from different people yeah. because this is the, this is the commonplace for for people to be thinking the way they're thinking, which isn't the gospel. But here we we have this writer of Hebrews again. Even even if you back up, I mean, sometimes we talk about backing up a few verses, looking ahead a few verses, and that's a start. But how about back backing up about four chapters, right, <laughs> or or more, in, in this book of Hebrews? Uh, but even starting with chapter seven, which we've talked a lot about, seven through eleven in the book of Hebrews, some of the most powerful writings that you're going to find when it comes to understanding the finished work of Jesus uh, and the new covenant compared to the old one that the Jews were under. But the same person in Hebrews who, who wrote to this group of Jewish people who were trying to sort out this thing about the law and Jesus, and boy, where do we turn here? What do we do with this? He's trying to help them along. And this referenced 1026 that you were talking about, if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Well, this this the same guy who wrote that, same person who wrote that, um, also told us a few chapters before that Jesus Christ was our guarantee of a better covenant, of a new covenant, new and better. Uh, those phrases get thrown around. He became the high priest because of the setting aside uh, and the ending of the law. Uh, he established a permanent priesthood. He is able to save forever. Jesus lives to make intercession uh, for us, blocks the sin problem between us and God. Um, 
So this this warning, and it goes on. I mean, we, there's so many things. I mean, he brought an eternal redemption. He took away sin. <laughs> he brought perfection. Um, and so this warning about willful sin was uh, not directed at people who sin, which is all of us, but rather at people who reject the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, because that's the only offering that takes away their sin. Reject that, there's no longer a sacrifice left. I mean, compare this to just a few verses before, where he says, I will not remember sins any longer. (laughs) This is part of the new covenant. I mean, uh, the prophet Jeremiah uh, wrote about this, and here the the writer of Hebrews is is writing about this, and, and he's saying, that the the Spirit of God has uh, bore witness with us that he is taking away something for all time, and it's sin. And God says he will remember them no more. I mean, think about that, period. (laughs) And (laughs) verse 18, let's tie that, let's tie this in, let's do some verse tying here and, and, and try to help people wrap their minds around things here, because after saying that God will remember sins no more, Now, where there is forgiveness or where there is remission of these sins, there is no longer an offering for sin. In other words, the sacrifice of Christ was it. That was the the final nail, so to speak, uh, when it comes to to sin getting in the way between us and and God ever again. So for somebody to suddenly jump down uh, some eight verses later and say, well, here it is. If we sin willfully, though, then they're, we're done. You, you, you're going to hell, uh, and there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. I've completely taken it out of context, Joel. Right. A verse here and a verse there will really, really, can really, really mess up some really good actual doctrine uh, and some really good news. And so that's why I, I like what you said there. You know, go back not just necessarily a few verses or paragraphs, but a few chapters, and see the big context, because they're in the book of Hebrews has become one of my favorite Bible books, uh, the epistles, that I because I, there's so much good stuff in there. And again, it, it, well, it used to be a scary epistle form because I didn't understand it, but then when you put it all together, when you tie all these verses together into a big writing, uh, you can really see so much good stuff there. And talking about, you know, people thinking that they're going to be... Uh, thrown in hell when they sin or when they do ungodly things. There's some other things, some other false assumptions that we can uh, talk about, like uh, verses that talk about how people who do certain ungodly things won't inherit the kingdom of heaven. Um, there are The Sermon on the Mount has some things in it. We can talk about the, the issue of tithing. There's, there's various other things that we're going to be talking about in the weeks to come as we continue our false assumptions series. So if any of those ideas and things interest you and uh, some other things that we'll talk about, they're coming up in the weeks to come right here on the Growing in Grace podcast. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski, heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace. Growing in Grace.